nativism. So looking at immigrants coming into the United States really work, the actual jobs they take, that was really the ultimate reward for these immigrants because working was their way towards independence whether that be independence in America or back to their home country. Um, many immigrants are going to get jobs with the help of like middlemen. This is keep in mind before the time of employment agencies and such. And so these middlemen would help them like get housing, loans and all kinds of other services. But a lot of times it would be at very high prices. Now we're going to see that a lot of um, immigrants will find actually work through ethnic associations or village or family connections from their mother country basically but what work they do really is going to depend on several different factors first of all it's going to depend on their actual skills and then it's going to depend on the region they're in and thus like the local economy and actually what discriminations are in that particular place the thing is stereotypes that you like see pictured here are not just going to harm certain groups. In fact, sometimes it actually helped certain immigrant groups get jobs. Uh, for instance, um, a lot of times Jewish people would only hire other Jewish people in the hope that they'd be less likely to unionize since they're all of the same religion. Um, though also, weirdly enough, a lot of uh, Jewish entrepreneurs, especially like in the textile in industry, would only hire like Italians because they felt like Italian people were less likely to unionize. Um, you see like Pittsburgh steelmakers, uh, they felt like Polish people were less likely to unionize. And so they were more likely to hire them over a black person. Although honestly, that's the case um, in a lot of different areas that a lot of places while um, immigrants may have faced nativism, which I'm gonna get into more in a second, um, generally places were more likely to hire an immigrant than they were a black person at this time period. Um, they're going to face still, though, lots of discrimination here in the United States. And you can see these like stereotypes here that you have on the far left, um, the Chinese person versus um, like a native born Protestant and how Chinese people are eating everything. You can see how um, black people versus Irish, um, they compare them the same. And so we've seen all the discrimination against Irish, I mean, uh, black people up till this point. So you can see what that tells us about um people's views on the Irish immigrants coming in. And um, to the far right, that's also a caricature of a Irish immigrant. When it comes to immigrant women, you do have some immigrant women work outside the home, but this is actually very few. Most of the time, they're more likely to do like piecework in um, apartments. Sometimes you have unmarried women that were immigrants working in like factories or as domestic servants. Other times, like for instance, a lot of Japanese people came to the United States and worked on farms. And so their married and unmarried women generally worked with their families on farms. The goal, though, for all of these immigrants on some level was to work for themselves eventually. That's what I mean about work being the ultimate reward in a way to independence. But very few of these new arrivals had skills and very much they didn't have any kind of resource except for maybe their wits. Um, the thing is, banks at this time period really weren't likely to extend um, a small business loan to some sort of budding ethnic entrepreneur. And you do have some small ethnic banks. And a lot of times these banks are the ones that do provide that initial stake in a lot of foreign uh, businesses being set up, or I should say immigrant businesses being set up really. But a lot of these um, ethnic banks generally failed over time. And that's the other thing. Just because an immigrant worked hard did not necessarily mean automatic success. You see a lot of times immigrants are not successful in America due to all kinds of problems from death, disease, to just bad luck and an unfamiliar environment. And then of course, all immigrants are also going to face 
nativism, nativism being the anti-foreign prejudice of Americans. So looking at nativism, while America at this time had this reputation of having, you know, open borders and it's a refuge from persecution and poverty, that really wasn't always the case. You see a lot of nativist sentiment um, causing violence and if not violence, like job discrimination in America. If you're looking at anti-immigrant sentiments, you can go back to actually 1301, the first half of US history. Uh, for instance, you get like the political party known as the Know Nothings in the 1850s, literally built on nativism. Now the Know Nothing Party's particular target had been um, the numerous Catholics and Jewish people coming from Eastern and Southern Europe. Um, partly though, this was because they could set them apart in two different ways, uh, language, differences and then generally those from southern and eastern europe have a slightly darker complexion and thus sets them apart and this is when you start seeing this like pseudo scientific underpinning of basically the natural hierarchy of race and you can see this hierarchy to the right here so you can look at this and at the top you have you know northern europeans those of anglo-saxon um, ancestry, so you can see wealthy wasps. Wasp stands for, and you can see underneath I've labeled this, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And so you can see how you have the wealthy wasps, then you have your middle class wasps, then you have your poor wasps, and then you have this old immigrants but not Irish. And you can see this is where the line of whiteness occurs. And notice that Irish are not included in the top category. So the top category above that line of whiteness is kind of like, these are the people that a lot of times native born Americans liked when they had nativist tendencies. Um, we see them below it, Irish, more the new immigrants than Asians, Latinos, Native Americans. And then at the very bottom of this hierarchy of race, of course, is African Americans. So we see um, this nativist sentiment in a lot of American institutions at this time. You have like newspapers would describe immigrants as, and I have a quote here, depraved beasts, harpies, decayed physically and spiritually, mentally and morally, thievish and liciousness, basically sexually promiscuous. So As much as there's this issue with nativism, then there's this question of if you are nativist, how do you want to handle immigrants? Now, some native born Americans wanted to like just send them back to their home country, but others wanted to take it further. They want to like outright exterminate them. And then there's the other extreme of just others wanting to restrict people from certain nations and everything. So immigrants were basically warned, assimilate quickly into American culture or fate, uh, share in the fate of Native Americans, which we're gonna get more into Native Americans later, but basically a quiet but sure extermination. One group in particular that is going to face particular discrimination is going to be the Chinese that move to America during this time period. The problem was the Chinese a lot of times would come over and work for low wages and in really harsh conditions out west, but this provoked a lot of resentment against native and even European born workers who were competing against them for jobs because Chinese immigrants would come in and be willing to do the job for less money on some level. And so we see a lot of violence increasing against them during like the 1860s and 1870s. Um, then we get things like Republican dominated Congress in 1870 will pass the Naturalization Act. This limited citizenship in the United States to white persons and persons of African descent. This is literally specifically supposed to prevent Chinese people from becoming citizens. This ban isn't lifted until 1943. They're basically the only group 
during this time period that can't freely immigrate into the United States. And the idea is that their children could become United States citizens, but they themselves could not. We also see a lot of anti-immigrant organizations made during this time period that have these nativist beliefs. So it's things like the APA, which is the American Protective Association. This was started in 1887. It claimed half a million members a year later. They specifically wanted to limit like Catholic civil rights in the United States. And a lot of this was all about, oh, protecting the rights and jobs of Protestant working men. Um, you then have like the IRL, which is the Immigrant Restriction League. This was made in 1894. It proposed like prospective immigrants had to pass some sort of literacy test, but they purposely made this test where it was presumed that most people coming from Southern and Eastern Europe would fail the test. Once again, the idea behind this was trying to protect wages of working men against the fatal competition of low price labor. The IRL failed to have any kind of literacy requirement enacted. However, all the propaganda from like these kinds of groups actually did encourage Northern universities to start establishing quotas that limited the admission of new immigrants into their um, schools, especially like Jewish immigrants. <laughs> 